Hey guys, Mr. Beeler here. Uh, we're going to do a tour of my toolbox. We're going to talk about some of the items you'll need in the industry starting out and what can be handy stuff. So, starting out, sockets. When you start out, you don't need all of these sockets. Uh, the stuff you're going to want, the critical items you're going to want are your 3 8 drive, deep and shallow metric sockets. Uh, if you want to pick up the standards, standards are helpful, but you guys are going to see not, not going to see as much of that in the industry. Uh, quarter inch drive, you want your quarter inch drive stuff. I would pick up metric uh, quarter inch drive deeps and shallows. They do make medium depth. These little guys. Sometimes they get into places that you can't reach the other two sockets in. Again, those are not critical, but they are handy. Half inch drive stuff. Again, critical items. I would go with the half inch drive impact metric. The impact you can use on your impact, you can use on your ratchet. That way you don't have to own chrome and impact. Critical item, half inch drive metric. Uh, some of the bigger sockets, you won't need those right away uh, as you pick those things up uh, for like spindle nuts or bigger, bigger equipment. Uh, you don't have to buy the high dollar stuff for them. In fact, I think most of those sockets are Harbor Freight sockets. I haven't broken any of those yet. Uh, extensions, I have some chrome extensions, I have some impact extensions. You can start out just using impact extensions. They will work on your ratchets, they will work with your chrome sockets or your impact sockets. Then we don't have to buy both sets starting out. Now I have some wobble sock or wobble extensions. Kind of act like a little bit of universal, you don't need those starting out. I have some swivel sockets in there, those are handy. Again, not a necessary item, but they are helpful. There's some more swivel sockets. I have some impact swivels. Again, not an item you're required to have or a critical item. Uh, Allen bits are Allen bits. You're going to need those in the industry. Those are critical. Uh, I'd say start out with your metrics. You can pick your standards up later. Torx bits, you will need Torx bits. That is a critical item. Some of these other things in the middle, I got some universal joints. Universal joints are helpful. Uh, adapters. Some more swivel sockets, some cruise feet that are 12 points, 8 point sockets, and more adapters. We have crow's feet. You don't need crow's feet right off the bat. They are handy. Metric standard, it makes them line wrench crow's feet for hard to get two fittings. We move into the ratchets. You do not have to have every ratchet they make. Uh, different ratchets for different occasions are handy. My go to ratchet. Is this 3 h drive flex head fine tooth? I've got several of them in different boxes. I love that ratchet. Some of the others, quarter inch drive. Again, the flex heads are nice. This little 3 8 guy fits into some tight spots. Again, he's not critical. You don't have to have him right off the bat, but he will save you some time in the future. Uh, longer ratchets, great for breaking bolts loose. You got stuff that's stuck. Torque wrench, my other little torque wrenches are at the house. A half inch drive, a torque wrench is going to be a critical item. You're going to need to have a torque wrench when you start out as a technician. Let's move down to the wrench drawer. The wrench drawer. Starting out as a technician, again, you don't need every wrench they have. I still don't have them all. Uh, but a good set of metric wrenches, combination wrenches. Uh, that's, going to, that's going to be one of the tools you use a lot. Standards you might want to pick up. You'll run into some standard stuff, not as much as metric. Line wrenches, you don't have to have a good set starting out. Uh, they are a critical item. You will want to get line wrenches. You can pick up the better stuff later. I used Craftsman line wrenches for years. They did a good job. Angle wrenches for getting in tight spots, not a critical item. They are handy. These big fitting wrenches. I think that one inch and five eighths is the biggest. I think I go down to three quarter. These are great in tight spots if you're doing fittings. If you start working on hydraulic stuff, if you're working in a service shop or heavy equipment shop, uh, I bought those at Harbor Freight. They were like 50 bucks for the set. Uh, other, other companies make them. They get kind of expensive. Stubby wrenches. I got them in gear wrench and regular. Not necessarily a critical item, but it is something that's very handy in tight spots. Gear wrenches, flex head gear wrenches. I like those. They can help you out in a pinch. You just have to be careful of those when you're taking a fastener out. You don't get backed up against something that's stuck. Bigger wrenches as you work through your career, you'll pick up some of the bigger wrenches. Uh, if you're working on smaller stuff, you won't need them, so they're not nearly necessarily something you have to have. 
screwdrivers. Screwdrivers are a critical item. You need to have screwdrivers. Uh, ratcheting set, you don't necessarily have to have it. The little minis. I've got picks, Torx bits, mini screwdrivers in that set. A normal set of screwdrivers is what you're going to want. If you buy a good set, they're going to last your entire career. Uh, and they will pay off. I do have some really tiny screwdrivers. Again, not a necessary item, but if you're working on small electronic stuff, they are a must-have, but not a necessary item. Bits. I got a Mac set in there. Some cheapy Harbor Freights and some other bits that we break a lot. Throw them away. Cutting tools and files and gasket scrapers. Uh, you might want to pick a file up. Good for fixing some if you've got burrs on stuff. Gasket scraper is a critical item. You're going to want to have a gasket scraper. This little guy here is a thread file. If you booger threads up, you can hopefully save them, straighten them out. Some of my oddball specialty stuff, there's some brake tools, hose pinch pliers, extractors, tubing cutter. I think there's some jiffy type connectors in there. A couple six liter Ford tools, fuel line disconnects, Allen wrenches, and some door panel tools. None of those are necessarily critical items. Oil filter wrenches. This is going to be a critical item. This is something you want to have. Starting out, you're going to do a lot of oil changes. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have the great big ones unless you're working on semis and big equipment. But usually the smaller ones. I do have some cup type sockets for filters. They're in a different drawer. Kind of a catch-all drawer. I got one of my funnels that fits about everything. Face shield for grinding. Face shield for torching. There's a towel in there for wiping the toolbox off tool bag for taking tools home. I think some of my leftover AC stuff. My air conditioning stuff is at home. Pry bars. Pry bars are a critical item. Uh, you can start out with a small like a three piece or four piece set. These Craftsman ones I used for years, uh, they treated me well and they are very affordable. I recently picked up some of the snap on ones, they're a little more expensive. Uh, but the nice thing about them, they have the strikeable head, you can hit them with a hammer. Roll head pry bars, not a critical item. You will want to pick them up at some point. Seal puller can be handy. These little plastic guys, Harbor Freight sells them. They're great for taking door panels off, doing window motors and window switches. They won't scratch paint up. Chisels and punches. Uh, basic chisel and punch set would be a critical item. Uh, you will need those in the field. You don't have to get the great big stuff right off the bat. Or like these set over here, these are bearing punches for big hubs. Uh, bushing drivers, tap and die set, extended allen bits. Again, those aren't critical items, but I would look at getting a punch and chisel set. More wrenches, hose pick pliers, or sorry, hose picks. Pliers in the next drawer. The hose picks, they make long ones for getting into tight spots, different angles for different places to get into. This Craftsman set I used for years, uh, I upgraded to some snap ones, so I got a, a, quite a selection of hose picks. They're great for getting hoses off without damaging the hose. Snap ring pliers, uh, you don't need a set starting out. Uh, just one set, just a basic snap ring plier would be all you need to start out with. Uh, some of these wrenches, some old stuff, some old, old plum, double-ended box. I got some Mac from way back in the day when, I don't know, how I can't remember how old those are, but they're just extras sitting around. Some Craftsman indexable gear wrenches, not a necessary item, but they're nice to have. Pliers. Now, pliers drawer is usually the most disorganized box or drawer in a box. Uh, these little racks, you can buy them online or you can buy them from Snap On. They cost a little more from Snap On, but they help you keep these pliers from being a tangled up mess. You guys starting out, critical needs. You'll need a side cut, a normal plier, a needle nose. You'll need some locking or vice grip pliers. A groove joint plier or channel lock type plier, those will be critical. Uh, some of the other stuff, the specialty stuff, the long reach needle nose, those are handy because they can get into places where your big mitts won't go. Those pinch off pliers, mini pliers are nice to have. Tin snips, you don't necessarily have to have those, but they can be great if you're fabricating stuff. Adjustable wrenches are nice, uh, just be careful because they can round stuff off. There's a hose cut off pliers in the corner. You guys remember the squeeze type hose clamps that suck and they pinch you, those pliers, get a set of those. Those will help you out in the industry. Hammers. 
Starting out with hammers, I start out with some cheap stuff. Uh, you can use cheap hammers. Uh, eventually you'll want to upgrade as the handles start coming loose from the heads. I've got some of the Mac Anti-Vibe. I really like those hammers. They work good. The price was pretty affordable. I've got some of the Snap-on hammers. They're nice. Those are all dead blow steel hammers. I've got some rubber dead blows. I've got some Wiltons for my bigger hammers. They're pretty good hammers, pretty good price. I usually have an eight pound sledge in there, but it's at home. I think I was beating on something at home. So critical item, ball peen hammers. Another catch all drawer. Uh, black box is a video bore scope. You don't need one of those. You do not need one of those starting out. Respirators, if you're getting into nasty, dirty stuff or chemicals, you'll need that if you're getting into bad chemicals. Transfer punches, you don't need those starting out. There's a stethoscope in there and a balancer puller. Optional items. Another mask. Some Loctite hiding in there. Great big socket. Again, this is not a necessary item. I remember what size was that guy? It was a four inch? Probably. That was for dump truck wheel bearing nuts. If you get into specialty stuff, you start working on big stuff, you're going to be buying bigger tools. Top drawer, paperwork and stuff I can't remember, so I write it down. Uh, or little notes to remind myself to pick stuff up. Worksheets for billing customers. Air tools. Air tools, uh, half inch impact, I'd say is a critical item for taking wheels off, getting stuck fasteners out. You don't have to buy the biggest or baddest. Get something that works and is affordable for you. I have some of the mini impacts. These are great for tight spots. I've got a half inch drive and three eighths drive. Die grinders, the 90 degree and the straight ones are critical items for cleaning gaskets, cleaning rims. If you got to clean off debris at the bead, some of my other items, there's a needle scaler. That's an optional item. Air ratchet, optional item. Three eighths drive impact. Air hammer. Eventually in your career you want to get an air hammer. They're great for getting stuck fasteners loose. Kind of a miscellaneous drawer. I got a light, mirror, another light. Magnet tools, the back scratchers are they're, they're kind of cool. Uh, tire gauges. Critical item. You have to have tire gauges. Utility knives, critical item for cutting stuff. You'll need those in the field. Magnetic pickup tools, critical item. Tape measure, critical item. You want to have that stuff. Electrical drawer. Uh, today's cars become more electronic based, more electrical diagnosis goes on. A voltmeter is something you need to have. It is a critical item. Uh, strippers, crimpers, and cutters. You need those guys. They're critical items. Terminal pick tools are not, not a critical item. You will want to pick them up at some point in your career. Test light. Uh, this is an LED, so it's a low amperage draw, 6, 12, and 24 volt. Those are nice to have, critical item. Test leads, this is a set that retractable. You can roll them up to store them. Uh, we will be making those your junior year, uh, so you'll already have those. Butane torch for soldering or melting heat shrink. And various other battery terminal tools and test wires. Cordless tools. Most of my cordless tools are in my home box. Uh, the stuff I do have here, a little cordless ratchet, it's pretty cool. I'm getting used to having that. I'm liking it more than the air ratchet. Drill and screw gun. Miscellaneous drill bits. Those are not critical items, but they are nice to have. They are time savers. My specialty set kind of stuff. I found over the years, if you write on the ends of them, you know what's in there, you can find it a lot faster. So if I'm looking for my belt tool, hey, there it is. I don't have to dig through stuff. The fan tool, there it is. Same with the tie rod tool, because this stuff starts stacking up in here and getting buried under stuff, and you waste time looking for stuff. So if you mark that stuff, it helps you out greatly. The toolbox itself, uh, I've had to buy a big one to fit all my stuff in there. Uh, you don't have to start out with the biggest, baddest toolbox. Uh, for the cost of this box, you could have bought a decent used pickup truck. Uh, but eventually, at some point, you probably want to upgrade to a nicer toolbox. I will do a later video showing my home box so you can get an idea of what you can have that's affordable. Up on top of the box, worktop's kind of cleaned off today. There's no junk on there. I have air tool oil. I keep some wax here. Keep this box waxed. 
dirt and stuff doesn't stick to as bad. Some drill bit lube, Vaseline for seals, water mug, rubber gloves for dirty jobs, more air tool oil, never seize, motor oil on a squirt can, electrical sealer, and a good old American flag. Uh, but that's, that's it for the box tour. I will let you guys know what's going on in the description with our Google Classroom or through the email what this assignment's going to entail. Uh, so I will catch you guys next time.